Thank you. The Lord be with you. It's really good to see you tonight. We're so glad that you came, and it's great to see all of you here. And those of you who are joining us online, we welcome you also. But we're glad to be able to share this night together. As you've noticed, the room is arranged a little differently than uh, our normal Sunday morning. But uh, if you do a, a serious look at the New Testament, you'll probably discover that Jesus spent a whole lot of time teaching around tables. So uh, maybe around tables would be the way to do it. I don't know. But uh, it's certainly a place Jesus enjoyed to teach. And we welcome you here tonight to this service. Uh, I want to remind you that tomorrow night is Good Friday. And at 6.30, we'll, be, uh, we'll have that service. It will be a, known as a tenebrae service. It's a service of scripture and candles. And uh, it's a very moving service as we walk through the passion of Christ for us. And so we invite you to come back and be a part of that tomorrow night. And then, of course, Sunday is Easter. And uh, I am excited about Easter, looking forward to sharing this Easter together with you. And I hope that you have really been thinking about and praying about who you will invite to come and be with you this Easter. And uh, I hope you'll bring them as you come on Sunday morning to either the 9 or the 11, and we celebrate Easter Sunday morning. So tonight, we're going to sing some songs, read some scripture. We're going to gather together around these tables and remind ourselves that we are family and that God has invited us to be a part of God's family as well. Just as Jesus gathered the disciples, we gather together. Please stand and join us in this call to worship. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. This parent, the beast for love. Our first hymn this evening, uh, 288, Were You There? Let's sing verses 1, 2, and 3.
1992, What Wondrous Love Is This? to invite you to join me in a uh, prayer of confession. We are all uh, welcome as we come here tonight and welcome to this table. And uh, we prepare our hearts even now by praying together this prayer of confession. So I ask you if you will say it with me. My brothers and sisters, Christ shows us his love by becoming a humble servant. Most merciful God, we, your church, confess that often our spirit has not been that of Christ, where we have failed to love one another as he loves us, where we have pledged loyalty to him and our lips and then betrayed, deserted, or denied him. Forgive us, we pray, and by your spirit, make us faithful in every time of trial through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. But Christ suffered and died for us and was raised from the dead and ascended on high for us and continues <clears throat> to intercede for us. So believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen.
Our first scripture reading is from Psalms chapter 116, verses 1 through 2, and verses 12 through 19. Hear the word of the Lord. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, precious in his sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem, praise the Lord. The word of God for the people of God, and the people said, thanks be to God. Our third hymn this evening, uh, number 622, there is a fountain filled with blood. Let's sing verses 1, 2, and 3.
Scriptures from the Gospel of John, chapter 13. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was draped around him. He came to Simon Peter, <clears throat> who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, then you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. And when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes, and he returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. And very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. And now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. The word of God for the people of God. The beginning of chapter 13 is actually uh, signifies a new part in the Gospel of John. Uh, it's known as the Book of Glory. The first 12 chapters of the Gospel of John are, are called the Book of Signs because in those first 12 chapters, there are seven signs. In the Book of John, miracles are not called signs, or, or the miracles are not called miracles, they're called signs because they always point to something else. So in the first 12 chapters, you have these signs that Jesus did. And then in third, starting in chapter 13, uh, begins the passion of Jesus and focuses on what he has done for us in this, his particular passion in the last part of the gospel. So we know the, uh, the story well. They're eating supper and Jesus stands up and takes a towel and wraps around him and takes a basin of water. And he kneels down and begins to wash the feet individually of the, of the disciples. And um, it's sort of odd, if you remember, just a few days earlier, Mary, when Jesus was eating in her home with, with Lazarus and, and Martha, she got down on her hands and knees and had begun to wash Jesus' feet and anoint his feet with um, perfume and, and even wipe them with her hair. And so now during this supper, Jesus is down on his hands and knees washing the disciples' feet, and it sort of makes you wonder what's going on. A person's feet are not safe during supper anymore, apparently. Now, as just like when Mary anointed Jesus' feet, when Jesus started to wash the feet of the disciples, there was just sort of a stunned silence because this was totally unexpected. And they didn't know exactly what to make of it because no one else had volunteered to wash everybody's feet. And in the, the other, the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, it's interesting that on, on the way to Jerusalem this very night, the disciples had gotten into an argument about which one of them was the greatest. And now here is Jesus on his hands and knees washing their feet. If that doesn't 
really feel like humble pie, I don't know what in the world possibly could. And you would think that just us remembering this one action of Jesus would be enough to rid us of arrogance for the rest of our lives. Uh, unfortunately, it, it doesn't work that way, but you would think it might. Jim Somerville tells the story of um, having a friend that everyone in the group looked up to and respected. This was just one of those people that everybody loved and everybody respected, looked up to him. And he said one day they were having a conversation and his friend looked down and noticed that Jim's shoe was untied. And right in the middle of the conversation, without saying a word, he just dropped down to one knee and tied his shoe and then just stood back up and kept listening. And Jim said it completely threw him. And he said, I felt embarrassed and I felt so incredibly humble that this person that I knew and respect would kneel down and tie my shoe. He said, I, it made me start to think, you know, just a little bit to imagine how Peter must have felt and the other disciples must have felt when Jesus knelt down and began to wash their feet. And Jesus tells us why he did that, why he washed their feet. What was the motive for him serving them in that way? Um, I, I heard a story a long time ago about it. This happened many years ago. Uh, a pastor was out for an evening walk through the neighborhood, and he happened to see a little boy, a little preschool boy, standing on the front porch of a house, jumping, trying to reach the doorbell. And the pastor saw it, and he kind of smiled and thought, I oh, hear this little guy's been outside playing in the door. So he walked up on the porch, and he rung the doorbell three times pretty hard, looked down at the little boy, and he said, now what? The little boy said, now we run like crazy. <laughs> we can observe actions, but we cannot know what the motive is. Uh, you just don't know what's going on inside. And uh, Sandra Schneider points out that there are a lot of different motives for serving you know, sometimes we serve out of this, uh, this motive of domination or superiority. And the attitude is, well, we'll help those folks because they need me. Um, if, if, it, you know, if I don't help them, they're not able to do anything on their own. It's sort of a, a, almost a colonialism attitude, an attitude we often have toward the poor. They need us to help them because they need us. It's kind of a condescending attitude. Another motivation is obligation. We serve because we're supposed to. We don't really want to, but we're supposed to, and we feel like we need to. And, and we can do that in all different you know, situations. Uh, it may have started out as an act of love, but it's not really love anymore. We've actually grown tired of it, but we just keep doing it out of obligation. And then there is another motive, and it's the motive of friendship. We serve others because they are our friends. And we're equals. We don't have any more to offer them than they have to offer us. Jesus called them his friends. Now, Jesus wasn't their equal, but he still treated them as equals. He treated them as friends. And, and when we, when we serve people as friends, it means that we see them as people who are every bit as deserving as we are of all the grace that we have received. And we don't serve them because we're supposed to. We serve them because we want to. Jesus reached out and he served the disciples as friends. And then after demonstrating this uh, act of love through servanthood, he said, and now there is a new command that I'm giving to you. Love one another as I have loved you. And in a nutshell, that's what being a Christian is. It's loving one another as God has loved us. He didn't just tell us to go love one another. He actually demonstrated it to us and showed us how we love and how we serve each other. On this week, we come to the church and we 
we reenact this meal and we celebrate this meal remembering what Jesus did on this night. And tomorrow, uh, all day and then tomorrow night in the service, we'll remember what Jesus went through for us on the cross. We remember that his love was demonstrated to us in action. And then he says to us, love one another as I have loved you. He has loved us as friends. He has loved us as part of the family as we sit around tables together as family. He served them as friends. And so that's how we serve one another as friends. We love one another as friends. And I pray that tonight will be a night that we can renew our commitment to that It's simply understood, but difficult to do. But that command of what it means to be a Christian, to love one another as God has loved us. We love because Jesus first loved us. And as we gather around these tables tonight, and as we take this meal, we remember not only the bread and the wine, and the water, and the towel. But we remember the command. We remember the encouragement. Love each other like Jesus loves us. Amen. sure who you really are when all you feel is the way shape of your scars you have more wounds than you can count open your eyes look all around you are alone this is your home come and remember who you are here do this to remember who i am come and remember you belong here all belong here when you don't know to forgive when locked doors seem like the only way to live you got more questions than you can count open your eyes look all around you aren't alone this is your home come and remember
You know, I am, uh, I'm the youngest of 10 kids. It was um, a, a long time, it seemed like forever, before I finally got invited to sit at the big table. <laughs> if you have ever experienced that, you know what a joy and a privilege it is when you finally get asked to sit at the big table. And so we come here tonight because God has invited us to the big table to the table where he has shown us his grace, to the table where we are welcome, broken, wounded, however we come. We come to remember that God loves us and extends his arms and grace to us. And so tonight, uh, I wanna invite you to uh, join me in the great Thanksgiving, and then we're gonna come and gather together. Everybody gets to sit at the big table tonight. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, and it's a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread, and you create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When we had turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us in him your crowning gift, emptying himself that our joy might be full. He fed the hungry. He healed the sick, ate with the scorned and the forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, you delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. And he told them to take and eat. And as often as they ate this bread, which was his body, which was given for them, as often as they ate it, to do so in remembrance of him. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he poured it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said to them, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, 
we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them to be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast in his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let me invite you to, um, just where you are at the table, to reach and get a piece of bread and to reach and get the cup. And then we will take the bread all together at the same time and we will take the cup together at the same time. Remember Christ's body, which is given for us. This is the blood of Christ that was given for you. Dear God, as we come to you in the mystery of this table, that you have invited us to come and sit at your big table and be family. And we remember that as we come here that you give us grace that we may go out and love those around us as you have loved us. So strengthen us from having been here this evening and participated in this sacrament and experienced your presence. Strengthen us to go from here in love and service to those around us. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our closing hymn this evening, number 295, in the cross of Christ I glory. Let's sing verses one and two. joy to eat with you at the big table tonight. I hope you'll come and uh, be with us tomorrow evening at 630 as we share together in our Good Friday service. Now hear this blessing. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake 
became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you this night and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.